Hi, I'm Ingrid from Quilt Essential Co. And today I'm going to show you how to load a quilt backing and batting and top onto a long arm machine. Here we have the pickup bar. Here's where we're putting our backing. So this is the backing bar. The canvas rolls up the back and comes over the belly bar. And so this is what we're going to be loading our backing onto. In a previous video, I did show you how to get your pieces together. And so there's a pin on my backing. The pin is going towards my pickup bar and it is wrong sides up. And I'm just going to drape that over the top. And what I want to do here is now snap this on and we're re using red snappers today. These are red snappers and I have three small clips to put this on. I always start clipping my backing down in the center. This prevents puckers slightly smooth it out to the side, keep it equal and even, and put another clip on and do the same on the other side. So this will hold it into place while I put my big red snappers on. These are the large red snappers and they have a channel in the back. And so if you lift it up, that opens the channel that makes it easier for them to go on. You can just slide your first little clip out of the way, press down your red snapper, and place it along here, lean into the belly bar and snap that into place. When you get towards a clip, just remove your clip and keep going. And now you have that on. Now I'm going to go down to the backing bar at the bottom and I'm just going to lift this clip up and wind that backing on. While I do this, I want to just make sure it's fairly smooth. If you need to go over and just keep it a little even, you can do that. But as it rolls, it's usually fairly smoothly rolling on there. You just want to check it every now and then and watch as you go. When I'm approximately two inches from the top of my pickup bar, I want to stop and then I'm going to go and lock this channel down here and go to the other side of my machine. You want about the same tension across the top of your backing so that you don't want it too loose on one side and too tight on another. Take your pin out and again from the center put a clip on each end, put a clip. And then this is when I like to use the pantograph table. I will unlock my pickup bar on this side, unlock my loading bar, and I'm just going to pull my backing towards me, place it onto the table, and then this way it's really easy to get those red snappers on. Slide that clip out of the way, Lift it up and you can just use your pressure quite fast and push that red snapper down. Okay, once that's done, I'm just going to flip that pickup canvas over the top. Go to the other side of your machine again. And what I'm doing now is I'm rolling up my pickup. I will adjust my batting or my sort of my backing down here so that they're fairly even. Then I can lock this one and lock this one. I want a bit of tension on my backing, but I don't want it drum tight like this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put my batting onto this. And I want to make sure that my batting is also in the same direction. Remember we left four inches extra for batting and backing compared to my quilt top. I have it loaded with what I call pimples down. 
because when they make the batting, they actually needle punch it and all the needles go in the same direction. So you want the, the same direction for your batting. So the pimples go down to the back side of your backing. And then that way when you're quilting, your needle is going in the same direction as they did when they made the backing or the batting. So then you just lay it flat at the top. And now I'm going to my machine and we're using a Gamel Vision 2. Um, and uh, I just am using two of my customizable buttons right now. I've got stop start stitching and single stitch. For that, that's all, that's all I need for loading onto my uh, quilt right now. So I'm just gonna slide over here and I am going to demo and show you how I'm gonna bring my thread up and how to tie off so it just makes it easier for you. If you just do a single stitch, you can just sweep your thread through and that pulls up your bobbin stitch or your bobbin thread right here. And if I want to lock my stitch, I can just take that away from where I've stitched, hold on to my top thread, come back again, take one more stitch and that pops up my bobbin thread underneath here too to lock my stitch if I need to. So that's the basic stitch that I'm gonna be using. So now I'm gonna baste my top. I have my screen set at baste, and I'm going to go up close to my red snapper, and I like to start in the middle of my quilt and work out, both sides out, so that I can keep my batting as smooth as possible. So again, I'm just gonna take one stitch, use my thread like a floss, pull that thread up. So now I have my bobbin and my top thread on the same, uh, same side, and I'm just gonna start stitching. But at, first of all, I'm gonna set my horizontal lock. That just keeps my machine from moving forward and back. It won't go forward and back, but it will go sideways. So, Put a bit of backward pressure onto your batting and that gives me a really straight line so that I'm straight with my machine. You don't want your batting to pucker so if you just put a little bit of backward pressure on it it will just ease out really nicely. You get to the end you just need to basically come out and cut that thread or lock your stitch. Start back in the middle again Bring up your thread, hold on gently to your bobbin thread and your top, and again, you're just gonna keep basting it across. Make sure your batting doesn't get puckery. And you're done with your batting. Now, we're going to load the top. And the nice thing about having this right across here um, with the stitch on your batting is the batting is kept together and kept down. And now, when we put our top on here, we already have chosen which direction it's going again with my pin. You're going to line it up with that stitch. And so when that's lined up with that stitch, you know that you're straight with your machine. So when you're doing a pantograph or when you're doing free motion quilting, you are nice and straight with your machine right from the beginning. And again, make sure you leave on either side, batting and backing in case things move as you work. Take it off horizontal. Now we're gonna base this top. Tuck that under here. use your horizontal lock again start in the middle and I just like to take a little bit of my top and not come down too far otherwise you might interfere with your quilting so lock it horizontally again and bring up your thread and baste and while you're basting just a little bit of pressure on your top will keep it together 
You don't want to overstretch your top. You want it to keep nice and straight onto your quilt. And if you overstretch it, by the time you get down to the end and you're doing your pattern, it will be off center. It won't, it'll be a bit wonky. So here, just going to take it off horizontal again and then make a little loop and one more stitch, oops, or two, and bring up my bobbin thread so I can cut that. Go down the other side. And do the middle again. This is really important because if I do it from the center out and then baste my sides, I'm confident that it's all nice and wrinkle free. get to the edge of my quilt I am now going to make sure that everything's pucker free so I'm going to pull a little bit on my batting make it smooth underneath there and the same thing with my top and I don't want to pull on it too hard I just want to smooth it all down now's when you want to keep everything nice and level and we're going to base down the side and to base down the side, I like to start at the belly bar and work backwards so that if there's any easing of fullness in that needs to happen on the sides, that you can do that without stretching your quilt top for when you're at the bottom. So I usually come down to the belly bar, touch the belly bar, then go quarter of an inch back and now I am again going to bring up my thread. So one stitch, bring up my thread. Now I'm going to base back. And I don't usually do vertical locks on this because I might not have a top that is completely, completely square. So I just follow along as best I can and hold it in place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. But that's basically how you're basting your whole quilt on. And we now have our quilt basted and ready to go to our next video. And that's all about how to set up your pantograph.